Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Astrological Outlook for October 2021. This is the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of October. Now if you don't know your Sidereal Vedic Moon sign or your Sidereal Vedic Ascendant or even your Sun if you've got time to watch all three then you're very welcome to click on the link below and you'll be able to find out what those are and that way you can dip into you can use the timestamps and just dip into the portion of this report that you would like to watch. Each month I like to do a bit of a news matchup so we will be doing that. I do have a couple of news items that I want to talk through and before I do that I want to talk briefly about the planets for October 2021. Let's take a look and see what's going on in the sky this month for the collective. Now this month we've got four retrograde planets moving forward. We've got Pluto going forward on the 7th of October. On the 12th of October, we've got Saturn going forward. Then on the 19th of October, we've got Jupiter going forward. And as well, the 19th of October, Mercury goes forward. So you can see we've got a lot of planetary energy going forward. And these are the big players. We've got Pluto, Saturn and Jupiter in particular. Okay, these are the big guns. These are the big guys in the sky. They are going to be moving forward. So if there are plans that have been delayed for various reasons or people are re-strategizing, people were restructuring, now things are going to start to go forward. That's going to be important to watch. I have the note here that this is a month to stay safe. In one of my recent Astro Chat episodes, I mentioned that I think October 2021 and March 2022 are going to be difficult months. And the reason I say that is because I'm going to bring up my chart here. We've got Mars opposite Uranus and in a square to Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter. I'm not liking the look of this at all. And we're going to have that kind of similar tension happen, I think, again in March 2022. But I will be covering that in future reports. So stick around on the channel. I will be updating you on everything that I see. But definitely this month, this is a month to be careful. And if you are in Australia, if you're in Sydney, Australia, like I am, uh, I'm here, you know, in, in my family home here. I came back from London. Those of you who are new to me, you'll notice that my business is vediclifecoach.co.uk. Yes, I have a home there too. So um, I'm here in Sydney, Australia, still on lockdown. I will be for a while. And anyone who's in the Sydney area, anyone who's in Melbourne, Australia, please stay safe. Definitely October 2021, even through to November, guys. I'm not liking the look of any of this because the sun is going to be debilitated with, with Mars for that entire period. And I, I don't like the look of any of this. I think the sun leaves. And let's have a look here. Sun enters Libra 18th October and will be there in its debilitation sign until 17 November. Yeah, I'm not liking the look of this time at all. I was observing the news. I noticed quite a spike in police incidents. I'll call it that. Police unfairly treating the mums and dads of Australia very unfairly, I felt. I, there was a spike of these kind of videos on YouTube, flooded my YouTube dashboard. And I watched them all, of course, because I want to keep my finger on the pulse. I want to know what's going on. And I noticed that that spike of videos was around the full moon that we just had. And that full moon had Sun and Mars conjunct. And we're going to have this Sun-Mars conjunction just pretty much continue all the way through to November. So I'm urging anyone who's in a place where you have to be careful uh, and, and you know where that is. There are parts of the world that are opening up now. There are parts of the world that are easing. People are flying. Things are normalizing. And that's so, so wonderful. And I 
keep in touch with those parts of the world through YouTube as well. So I'm really happy to see that a lot of places are experiencing growth and moving forward. But if you're in a place like Melbourne, like Sydney, like anywhere else in the world where things are tense and difficult, please, please, please be careful October, November of this year, definitely. And I'll keep updating you as I go along as well. Okay, but this is definitely a month to be careful. So Mars together with Sun opposite Uranus in square to Pluto. This is all, I, I don't like the look of any of this. Yeah, uh, last full moon. Yeah, we had some of the worst police brutality ever seen in Australia. I think I've covered that now. So let's take a look what else is going on. We have some nice news in the sky. OK, so it's not all doom and gloom. It's not all bad. With Venus moving into Scorpio, 3rd October. Good. OK, so Venus has come out of Virgo, out of Libra. She doesn't do so well in those two places. You would think she'd do great in Libra, right? But she doesn't transit so well there. Uh, she transits really nicely in Scorpio. This is good. So if we like this. Venus is good news. OK, so if any time things are getting a bit tough wherever you are, tune into Venus energy and see what she's up to. She will probably have some positive energy for you, either for your moon, your ascendant. You can even look from your sun if you need good news. Uh, we've got Mercury strong in Virgo all month. Mercury and Venus are beautiful. OK, they're doing great. And 6th October, we've got a new moon in Virgo Hastha Nakshatra. So I'll be covering that for all the signs. Uh, again, this is a place 6th October, new moon in Virgo. I'm saying be careful because I'm seeing Sun and Mars together there in Virgo. Yeah, and that happened at that full moon, didn't it? And I did not like that full moon. That was really bad in terms of what was happening definitely around uh, in my city um, and in Melbourne, we had some of the worst stuff happen in the history of this country. So yeah, this I, and I, I feel like it's I don't think it's going to end uh, anytime soon. I, I'll check. Maybe December is going to bring us some new energy here. I might do a special for Australia if um, people request it in the comments. I can I can look at doing something like that so that we can get an understanding of okay, when, when are things going to lift and shift a bit here but I, I do think October November are not good months uh, so please please be safe 21st October full moon Aries Ashwini Nakshatra yeah I've got the note here again be careful Sun and Mars are very close though separated by houses but they're still kind of close together in the sky so I've got a lot of be careful messages written through my notes here and yeah, that's that's really important. All right. Well, the next thing I wanted to cover, which is kind of and I think this is a nice thing to cover. This is just something different. This is something topical. I wanted to cover the Nicki Minaj tweet. So that is the next item that I want to cover. What happened now for those of you who missed this or you don't know, basically Nicki Minaj is a rap star. I know about her through watching Ellen and I watch Ellen on YouTube because obviously I'm here in Australia and we don't get American television but somehow I found that I know how this happened a friend of mine saw this and she said you have to see this little girl and she sent me this link and this cute little English girl in her pink tutu she sings the song written by Nicki Minaj and she's a really brilliant singer. So I definitely watched that whole thing. And then I subsequently, you know, on YouTube, there were all these other videos of Sophia Grace and I watched them all. They were so cute. So I'll show you a little clip of this. Actually, it's worth watching because you'll get to see that Nicki Minaj is the kind of person that children absolutely love. Okay, so you can see just how popular she is, even with little kids, right? So that's a brilliant sign in itself. I always love people who love children and, you know, look at that. She's got tiny little kids who are fans. So that's a great thing in itself. And then I saw recently on September 14th, 
uh, Nicki Minaj tweeted to her fan base of 22.8 million followers. And I'm going to put the tweet on the screen. You'll be able to read and see what was said. Now, it's quite a statement what she's written up there. I really do feel for, was it the cousin's friend or somebody? I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of somebody third removed or something like that. But I mean, obviously, I really feel for that person and, you know, and the marriage that didn't happen and all this kind of thing. But for me, the tweet, I just wanted to bring it up because here's somebody who's speaking her truth. And can we see, can we look at the astrology for the 14th of September when she tweeted this? And can we see why she was compelled to do that? So we're going to have a look at that. And we're also going to take a look at her chart and we're going to see what in her chart is making her speak the truth. Can we see why she would have, you know, such a connection and a relationship with truth and a need to speak it and a, a care for humanity that goes beyond herself? Um, the thing in the tweet that I absolutely loved was the word pray. So you'll notice in there she's used the word pray. So here's a person I really like. Number one, children adore her. Number two, she used the word pray. So this is a person, even though I don't know her music very well, or I haven't really listened to her very much, I'm a little bit out of touch, but how cool is she, right? I like her already. So let's take a look at her chart. Let's see what's going on here. So I'm going to bring up her chart on the screen. You can take a look as well. And we can see now, here's the thing. I don't have her precise time and I feel okay to just, let's just take a look from the moon. We can do that in, in Vedic astrology. You kind of get 50% information. We're not getting the full story at the moment with a rough midday time that I've put in, we've got the Ascendant uh, as Aquarius at the Bishak, which is actually perfect. So if she was born at midday and she's an Ascendant at the Bishak, we can see there's a humanitarian right there. But let's just pretend the Ascendant could be anywhere, okay? We've got her Moon, a Virgo Moon. Now this is a Moon-Mercury relationship going on right here. So we can see that she's a writer. She has some gift for writing. Uh, we've got an exalted Saturn in the second house and an exalted Mars in the fifth. So this is also great for creativity in speech. Another, I tend to think the third house can be a good speech house as well. Third house is also courage. It's also effort that we put into life. It's all kinds of things. And she's got a really lovely Jupiter and Sun placed there. And that is in Scorpio. But definitely from looking at these placements, we can see, firstly, we've got a writer, we've got a beautiful, you know, someone talented and creative with their speech. And she's got the courage. She's got the guts to be able to do something about it. So isn't that beautiful? We can very much see that in this moon chart here. Now, what was I looking for? Okay, I was looking for collective energies. So before I brought up her chart, one of the things I've been thinking about lately is that I've kind of been asking myself in a chart, what is it that makes someone consider other people beyond themselves? Okay, so some people, they only just think about them, which is fine, you know, because we're all at different stages of development and everyone is doing their best. So I fully believe that. But there are some people when you just look at the build of their consciousness or how they are or who they are, you notice that they only have so much time and effort and energy to look after their own life, which is very good, right? We should all be at least just looking after our own life. But there are some people who, who really think about others as well, very much. They're, they're consciousness is, I don't know, it's sort of uh, more expansive or they really, really deeply care about other people, about other people's rights, for example. Um, and one of the theories I have is that if you run a lot of collective energy in your chart, then you will really care about the rights of other people. If you run a lot of kind of individual private energies, you will, will just care for yourself. So what are these collective energies I'm talking about? So that is Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. 
Okay, so we've got the Jupiter and Saturn signs, or of course we can look at the houses. So you're running ninth house, 10th, 11th house, or 12th house energies. If you've got planets in any of those areas, then you'll definitely care for more people than just your own self. So if we take a look at this chart here that I've got up, so as I was saying, if we take a look here at this chart I've got up of Nicki Minaj, what do we see in here that is making her care about other people in addition to just herself? Definitely look at that. We've got Sagittarius and Capricorn really well lit there. We've got Ketu in Mula Nakshatra in Sagittarius. So this is a person who has a gift for going deep, for figuring things out. For I always tend to think Mula Nakshatra, that's a person if you've got really strong Mula Nakshatra, you've got some strong intuitive or healing gift with that as well. And that's what she's got. She's got this ability to go really deep and figure things out and bring it bring it back for the rest of us kind of thing. So definitely she's got great energy here indicating that she would really strongly care for people beyond herself. Now this is the kind of place where if we had her precise birth time, I could plug that in and then we could get a gauge on where, which houses these all belong to. At the moment I can't see that so I don't know. But imagine if she's got one of these, well, she's got the 10th house lit there with Rahu. It's a little bit weak because the Lord is back there with Ketu. So as this stands, this is not the best thing to show us where the house energy is. If we had her ascendant, we'd be able to really look at that. At the moment, we can't. But so far, so good. Even just from the moon, we've got two very strong houses indicating a person that cares beyond the self. She really genuinely does. So, and the other thing is, is that beautiful Mars, exalted Mars, ability to fight. She's got the strength to do something about it and to say something, right? Where a lot of people wouldn't and a lot of people don't. I see so many people who have these large followings and they just don't talk about what's happening in the everyday world. And sometimes I think, wow, like, see, that doesn't make sense to me because I, I tend to think, well, one should speak about what's going on. This is really important. This is history in the making. I feel like it's kind of our duty to speak about these things or that we must speak about these things, even if it means that you're putting your income stream at risk. I tend to think, well, who cares? It's worth it because you did something potentially, you know, you used your platform to do something that may really make a positive difference in someone's life. So to my way of thinking, it makes perfect sense to do what she did but to a lot of people they wouldn't and there'll be other placements for that and other things that we can look at there the other thing that we have in her d9 chart is she's got moon and mars in aquarius at the bishak okay there's the freedom fighter humanitarian there's the person who really cares beyond the self and when we're looking at that d9 chart we can see that as spouse, we can see that as future self, but very much another way of reading the D9 is it's your internal self, it's your inner world, which as we age, you know, we refer to that more ideally. We're looking within as opposed to looking outside and we can see that she's very much doing that. She's doing great. So let's take a look at the 14th of September and see, okay, what was going on on that day to prompt this or to make this happen, to make this tweet happen. So let's take a look at this. We've got Mars transiting over her natal moon. It's precisely on her moon, which is pretty incredible right there. Then if we look at her natal Mars, that's in the fifth house and Saturn is transiting through, you know, fifth from the moon Capricorn. So we have a materialization possible here something to do with mars right uh we've got her natal moon is lord of her 11th house yes so we've got this whole line active 
because I'm looking at that moon there. So Mars is passing over her natal moon. The moon is the Lord of the fourth house. What's there at the fourth house? Well, I would say that is, now you could read this as, oh, did I say fourth house? I meant 11th house. Sorry, it's just I saw the number four there. It's cancer. That is her Twitter following. They're located there. You can see a large YouTube following definitely from the 11th house. You can see them from the seventh as well, I tend to think. There are two places. Even the third, mm, the third is we're getting a bit more private energy. You see, it's the collective energies. That's where it's more public. So I tend to read 11th and 7th as followings or fame. But we can see that her, that whole line is active there, that kind of 511 line. So there's a materialization, which is Saturn, of what was on her mind, the moon. So isn't this interesting? This is, I just love seeing this. It's really, I'm really looking at Mars and Saturn here as being these things materializing because it's also a bit of speech. Let's have a look at that. Well, her natal Saturn is in a second house. Transiting moon. The other interesting thing was that the transiting moon was in Scorpio, third from her moon. So her courage was active, but as well as revealing very personal information. So the type of information, it was, yeah, quite personal. It was quite sort of Scorpio, wasn't it? It was like fascinating, fascinating how all this was lit up. So really I was looking at... I mean, I'm kind of seeing Mars, Moon and Saturn as being the key transiting planets that activated this event. It's just amazing, right? So anyway, so in addition to the Nicki Minaj story, the other couple of news matchup bits I wanted to share these, I'm not going to match these up with the stars or anything. They're just a couple of links, which I'm going to put in the description below. One was of Tulsi Gabbard, and she is speaking out, which I thought was really incredible. She mentioned, I think it's a Senate hearing or something like that. I just, I just kind of watched it quickly while I was doing something else, but it was really amazing because I look over at the screen and, oh my God, there's Simone Biles, the gymnast. And I was like, what? So I, I will sit and watch this properly as well. Um, so I'll link that below, but I just thought that is amazing news because one of the things I said in a previous Astro Chat was October 21 and March 22, these could be the months that put a spanner in the works of the elite up there people kind of thing. So I thought that was a significant piece of news. There's somebody who's really standing up, really speaking truth. So I thought it was worth sharing that link. I'll share it below and I'll just call it something like uh, Tulsi Speaks Up or something a bit generic. And the other link I wanted to share was a chat that I watched today by Laura Eisenhower and Kathy O'Brien. And that contains some really positive news as well, because Kathy is basically saying she believes that we've really turned a corner and that we are definitely going to rise and unite and overcome. And, you know, this house of cards is definitely falling down. So you can check out both of those links in the description below. I'll try to, if the Kathy O'Brien, Laura Eisenhower link doesn't work, please just pop a comment in the comments below and I will update that because I think Laura Eisenhower herself said that she may move the video in case it gets censored or, or something along those lines. So we'll get there. Uh, don't worry, I will make sure that there's some way of uh, updating the link or something like that. All right, well, why don't we get into the mini readings? How are we doing for time? We're doing okay. All right. Let's do this. Now, as for mini readings, I should probably always have a little spiel about this. You can look at, I'll, I'll put a link, I'll timestamp this bit because people always ask, people always ask, what do I look up? Okay, it's really easy. Look up your moon. Very important to look up your moon. Why? Look up your moon because that's your mind. 
And very often we live most of our lives in our minds. We live most of our lives looking at a screen. You know, this is how we live our lives these days. It's quite sad, but it's quite true. Um, so do look up the moon sign when you find out your moon sign. It's your mind, it's how you feel about things, it's how you'll experience things mentally, emotionally even as well. Your ascendant, that will show you the physical path that's unfolding beneath your feet. So that's not as much how you're going to feel about or interpret, it's kind of going to show the what. what what's going to happen, what's going to materialize, what is it that's going to happen. Now your sun, you don't have to look up your sun, but I'm including the sun these days because some of you have written in the comments below and you've told me that it's really, really helpful to look up your sun. And it'll be helpful for you if you're quite a sun person, if... And what does that mean? So that means maybe your ascendant is sun or one of your nodes is in the sun. Maybe you've got a lot of planets conjunct your sun. Perhaps creativity is really important to you. Perhaps you're a creative artist and you're trying to birth something or you're trying to launch something or create something or do something. Sun's a really good thing to look up. So these are the three that you can look up. But if you only have time, if you only have time for one, well, I don't know what you, I would choose moon that's what I would choose if you have time for two I would choose moon and ascendant okay the path of your life that's what you should look up if you've got time for all three that's wonderful all right so let's take a look at Aries Aries welcome thank you so much for joining now this month we've got Venus moving into your eighth house. Now I didn't talk about Venus last month because she wasn't in such an exciting place, but she's moved somewhere lovely now. So we've got good news, which is great. Venus has moved into your eighth house, so this is really good for relationships. You might have felt that over the last two months or so, things were difficult in your relationship. If that was the case, that's because of Venus transit. And often when I've consulted one-on-one -on -one with people in person, uh, yes, I've discovered that when Venus goes through, you know, um, Virgo and Libra, it's, it, it never feels that great with the relationship. But then when Venus moves into Scorpio, that's a lovely relationship transit. So I've got the note here, you can enjoy a smoother time in love. Isn't that wonderful? Now, Sun and Mars are in Virgo in the early part of the month mid-month they're going to go into Libra. So what does that mean for you? It means your energy might drop a little bit mid-month onwards because Sun and Mars do brilliant in Virgo and that's sixth house for you. You might discover a drop in energy. You might also discover that there might be some conflicts at work or with business partners or possibly even in your marriage as well. I know I just said Venus is good for love. She's in Scorpio and that's better. But do be careful uh, with your marriage partner as well because Sun and Mars in, in that seventh house there, it, you know, it can. Venus is great if you're dating or something like that. But if you're married, be careful, okay? Uh, Mercury is still in Virgo. So let logic lead in your relationships with other people and that will save you. It's a time, it's a better time to be logical. Use your logical head instead of your heart energy. Now you've got a new moon on 6th of October and that's happening in your 6th house. We've got Mars present in amongst the mix which is really quite interesting. So This is a great time. We've got a new moon here. This is a great time to plant a seed and this is happening in your sixth house. So I'm going to ask you if you could win at something that you do, what would that be? So I'm definitely referencing the Mars energy here because we've got that Mars masculine energy, that doing kind of energy. Hasta can be quite hands-on. Virgo is quite practical. So if you could win at anything, and especially at something you do, where you put your effort in, what would that be? And you can wish for that this month, 6th of October. This is a great time to plant that seed. 
plant that intention that I want to develop this skill. I want to be excellent at this. I want that when I apply my effort, I get results. This is also a great thing if you want to plant a seed that you want to win or you want to win over the competition, not in a sort of massive ego way or a power over way, not like that, but just something where you want to win and you want to be excellent and you want to be seen. What, what, what is that? And, you know, this is a time to visualize it and to wish for it at this time. We've got a full moon on the 21st of October. That's happening in your first house, Ashwini Nakshatra Aries. Okay, this is good. This is, we've got the potential perhaps for some physical healing or some kind of release that you might actually feel physically. This could be a really lovely time to just go quiet, go within, meditate, see if you can feel if there's anything that you could do with releasing in a, in a physical way, if you could really relax, if you could really do some deep meditation. So we're talking 21st October, some kind of deep meditation. I do have some meditations on my channel, which you're very welcome to um, have a look at, but there will be all kinds of meditations that you can try and where you can really experience a deep release of some kind and see if you can feel in your body because this is a time of culmination the 21st October, the full moon, this is a time of culmination where you can really just let go of something. And for you, it's happening in your first house. This is physical. You can let go of some physical dynamic or something that you just don't need anymore. You're done with it. There's a cycle that has come to a close. So overall, I'm really liking this month for you, Aries. I think this is a good month. Even though you've got that sun and Mars there going into Libra, it may seem like that's not the best. All right, Aries, thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we've got Venus moving into your seventh house at the start of the month. So when it comes to love, Perhaps things have been strained a little bit for you over the past month. So the past month, we're talking kind of last month. And I didn't read Venus last month because it, the transit wasn't so good. Now it's good though, but even for you, it's not so good for a little while. You've only got about a month to go with this transit. Once you clear this month, then love's going to be great. Okay, so if you've been feeling a little bit of friction or strain in your relationship, this is why. You got a little bit longer to go with it, just about this month. And then the next month, your love life is massively going to improve. You've got the Sun and Mars in Virgo. Mid month, they go into Libra. So for you, this is happening from your fifth house to your sixth house. That's the transition there. So your energy is definitely gonna pick up mid-month onwards. I am so happy for you. You're going to experience this beautiful Sun and Mars energy mid-month onwards. Really observe this and see if it comes in. You'll have the energy to lead, to create, to win, to overcome the competition. You know, if there have been projects or things that have been being delayed, you're wondering why am I so late on this or I'm delayed, I'm blocked. I think you're going to feel forward momentum, forward movement. But most importantly, you're going to have the energy to do a lot, to achieve a lot. Mercury is still in Virgo. Be careful with superiors at work or if you manage people, be careful with the people that you manage as well. We've got new moon, 6th October, that's Virgo Hasta Nakshatra. For you, that's happening in your fifth house and we've got Mars present. So, and we've got Virgo Hasta Nakshatra. This is all very practical. This is kind of material. This is, you know, the real world here. So, and it's a new moon. New moon is very much about if you could plant a seed, if you could wish for something, what would you wish for? So with all of this activity in the fifth house, Mars is there, what are you gonna wish for? So I've got the note here, are there any creative skills you'd like to pick up? So 
are there creative projects or things that you'd like to do but more so specifically skills and it could be it could be related to a hobby it could be related some to something that would help you with your work it could be something like film editing it could be but definitely something creative something that's going to help your creative self-expression so definitely are there any creative skills you'd like to pick up I've got the note here especially using your hands I have a friend of mine who she has I think it's something like an exalted Venus in the fifth house I'm pretty sure that's what she's got and she she didn't know she had this talent but she does she has this amazing talent for making um, pottery and she just discovered this one day and she just started making hundreds of them and selling them and it just yeah she doesn't do it anymore it was just for a time it was quite incredible but I've got the note here what would you love to be able to do so that's the new moon 6th of October now on the 21st of October we've got a full moon and that's happening in 12th house Aries Ashwini Nakshatra so this is lovely energy and I'm definitely seeing this full moon as being a very healing full moon with the potential to close out some big cycles and for you this is happening obviously in your area of spirituality so you could have definitely some kind of spiritual healing happen at this time you could have a big release you could have some big dynamic or pattern come to a close at this time as well so if there's been something you've been working on spiritually trying to heal or trying to let go or trying to work through this could be a real time where this comes to a close where this ends once and for all yeah I've got the note here some dynamic or pattern excellent time to let it go light here that you can identify there's going to be a lot of extra light we've got a full moon it's incredibly bright there's something that's lit up that you should be able to see and just just release it just allow it and here's the thing about release this is one of the big things I've worked out that when you let go of something what you're really doing is you're just dissolving your attachment to the thing so the thing stays the information stays the memory is still there whatever it is is but it's your attachment to it that dissolves and I do think on this 21st October full moon 12th house Ashwini Nakshatra you should be able to dissolve some kind of attachment to to something and you're very welcome to let me know what that is in the comments below if, if you do experience any of this I would love to hear from you but um, Taurus it's looking like a good month for you I'm it's exceptional you, you're one of the lucky ones with this Sun and Mars energy you're very much one of the lucky signs as I was saying you're very much one of the lucky signs that is getting this beautiful Sun and Mars energy in your sixth house so that's really been month onwards and I think that goes largely through to I think mid-November so Taurus thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Gemini Gemini welcome thank you for joining now Venus moves into your sixth house this is at the very start of the month so I have the note here love life may not be so smooth for the next couple of months or so yeah this is true you've had a really good run with Venus actually you've had many many months you're coming off a stretch where Venus does fantastic she's now coming into a place where she doesn't do so well it will take about two months so if you're in a relationship and things haven't been so great um, I would just say take it easy kind of ride, ride this transit through you're going to have a good time I'm telling you in about a couple of months things are really going to pick up if you're single if you're looking for love any of that these next couple of months not ideal um, but once you're done with this transit you, you know your relationship energy is massively going to pick up for a good couple of months then there's going to be one more month um, Venus will go through uh, you know your 10th house I do believe then you're gonna have another beautiful stretch okay so just bear through with Venus let's take a look at your Sun and Mars energy 
they are in Virgo mid-month they go into Libra so that's from your fourth house to the fifth house okay so the energy here is not going to change too much uh, your Sun your soul vitality might feel a bit diminished when Sun is in Libra okay Sun is going to be debilitated you might feel a bit tired a bit drained at times you might also just feel like you don't want to express yourself as much maybe you might want to just you know maybe you might just want to to be working uh, as opposed to you know having having all eyes on you. you you might quite like to just lay low a little bit Mars energy will be good for your creativity can you get hands-on with a creative project it's a little bit like the hermit card in tarot tarot is such a wonderful system that does complement vedic astrology quite nicely this is definitely a hermit month for you got a new moon 6th october virgo hastha nakshatra <coughs> let's take a look at this so this is happening in your fourth house we've got mars present here so this could be a good time to visualize a new home, home of your dreams, uh, or plant a seed for a home renovation project. Is there something you'd like to do in the house? We've got Mars energy here, so this is very much about doing. Is there something you want to create? Is there something you want to do? Is there a project? You maybe you think, oh, if we could just extend that way or this way or <laughs> however it works. Like, or it could be, I know when I was in my tiny, tiny apartment, in England yeah I had the odd home renovation project I had ideas for like you know creating storage and doing things and could be as simple as doing a bit of clutter clearing really on that new moon 6th of October that could be a really good thing to do if you haven't done that for a while now you've got a full moon 21st October this is 11th house Aries Ashwini Nakshatra so I've got the note here and the way I'm seeing this full moon is very much that it's about healing. Some healing is going to happen I think across the board for everybody. So you could experience some healing potentially with an older sibling or friends who are like older siblings to you or who have been like an older sibling to you. This could be a really nice time to reflect on your circle of friends uh, or your network you know and just to appreciate and realize wow there are you know there are quite a few people in my circle or, or, or people who I know or you know it could also be a time to recognize and realize that you know wow I have changed quite a bit and and who knows it could be it could be some time to maybe let some people go as well if that's something that you have to do and uh, I do relate to that yeah because you know it's um it's difficult right now isn't it you know a lot is changing and um, a lot of people aren't agreeing on certain things either and that's making it difficult but I mean I you know I, I do maintain friends even though they might believe different to me or do things different to me I, I tend to keep people but uh, but don't feel like you have to if this is a time to let some people go it's a really good time 21st October it's a good time it's a good time of closure completion all right Gemini well thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome cancer cancer welcome thank you so much for joining I'm just going to check the time we're okay check my hair as well it's not so messy sorry this always bothers me and then when I'm editing I'm like oh my hair was a mess for that like whole 24 minutes all right Venus what's Venus doing Venus moves into your fifth house and when's that happening that's happening on the 3rd of October I think it's the 3rd of October let me bring this up I want to look up the exact day because I've been talking about this for every sign and I haven't been quoting the day so you're very lucky I think it's the second might even be yeah no it is the second so very very early in the month Venus moves into your fifth house this is great oh this is beautiful this is great for going out socializing if you can do that if you're in a part of the world where you're able to socialize definitely do that now I'm seeing on my youtube channel that there are so many people who are going out and having fun and doing things so this is great for meeting new people 
It's great for dating. If you're single, you might meet someone special. Um, it's great for time with children. If you have kids, it's a really great time to spend time with them. Now we've got Sun and Mars in Virgo. Mid-month, they're going to move into Libra. So for you, this is a movement from your third house to your fourth house. So you actually might notice, because you've been riding high on this Sun and Mars beautiful, strong energy in your third house, you might experience a drop of energy. when So that's kind of mid-month when they make that shift. Right in the middle of the month, you might notice a drop of energy uh, you might also notice that you need to be at home more or so things might arrange themselves so that you have to be at home more or you have to work from home or something like that or there's something about you feeling cabin fever or restless wherever you are you've just got this sense of there's an energy drop and then there's a restlessness or oh I have to be at home but I'd rather be out or something along these lines you, ca you could be feeling a bit of that I have a note here, it's not a good time for moving or property deals, uh, but it is a good time to do some home renovation. You should have some energy to devote to the home. If you are feeling restless, maybe you can channel that restless energy into fixing up your home, that kind of thing. We've got a new moon on the 6th of October in Virgo Hasta Nakshatra. This is happening in your third house. So we've also got Mars present here, which is great. Now, as we know with a new moon, this is really a time to set an intention or to plant a seed, to dream up something beautiful and to hope that that happens. So for you, this could be a great time to start a new project. It, this could actually, for you, this is kind of interesting because I'm saying that you can actually use this energy to start something new. So <clears throat> for example, if you've been wanting to start a social media channel or something like that, great time to start that great time to kick off something new so for you you can actually do something I think but this is also a good time if you're just wanting to plant a seed and visualize something visualize or wish for the courage or strength or what it is that you would need to create your own endeavor so if you're going to start your own business it's going to take energy it's going to take health it's going to take consistency and I know even just when I was starting this small tiny business um, yeah it was a bit like you've got yeah you got to commit you got to go okay every single month I'm always going to do a monthly and, and okay every week I'm always going to launch a video and okay every week I'm going to put this on Instagram or whatever and See, it's fine to do that just one week, but then it's the accumulative thing to keep doing it like week after week after week after week all the time. Like wish for the energy to do that. That's the, what I'm saying that like, yeah, sometimes when, if we want to start a new project or a new business or a new endeavor, you've got the perfect opportunity. 6 October, Virgo, Hasta Nakshatra, you've got the perfect opportunity to wish for the energy that you need, the health that you're going to need, the consistent effort that you're going to need, the money that you're going to need as well, because you know you might need a backup place to be or something like that. You might need some kind of safety net in place. So wish for all these kind of things. That could be really good. And that, this could be the kind of thing that you know you're in a permanent job now, but you want to be able to transition like in two, three years time into be able to do your own thing so that you are your own boss and you are, you know, doing something you're very passionate about full moon 21st October okay so where is this happening for you this is well this is an Aries Ashwini full moon and this is happening for you in your 10th house so for everyone across the board I've been saying that this is all about experiencing healing so where's this healing going to happen for you it's going to happen in your work isn't that interesting we've got that new moon this is quite perfect actually because this is about your work and this is about what you do. This is about you being passionate about your, your work and your contribution to the all is one. And we're all really feeling that strongly right now because we've got Saturn in Capricorn and we're all being asked to look at how we're all connected to each other. 
and what it is that we're doing. This time is very much about work actually um, across the board for everybody. So yeah, this is important. So for you, 21st October, 10th house, this is a great time to reflect on your career and really get a feeling for am I being fulfilled by what I do? And even if you want to change, this is a very important time on the 21st of October to recognize how far you've come and to be very grateful for where you are and to see all the stepping stones and to see all the links and connections that brought you to this place. It's a really good time to look back on that journey and think, wow, like every now and then we need to, if we're going up a mountain, it's good to just take stock, look back and see, oh, I'm making progress. I am going somewhere. This is a really good time on the 21st of October for you to do that. All right, Cancer. Well, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. We're good. Right. Venus moves into your fourth house. So that's going to happen at the very start of the month. Oh, this is lovely. This is great for spending time at home. This is great for spending time with your mother, if you can. Time nurturing yourself great if you can do that uh, it's a good time to enjoy comforts creature comforts great food you know being at home and, and really enjoying that this is an interesting note i've got here because this didn't really come up for any of the other signs it's a little special something for you leo i've got the note here that venus is in there with ketu and there could be some healing from past lives even and I'm, it's so interesting this has come up for you because I haven't made this comment on anyone else's monthly outlook so that is quite interesting so this could be something quite specific for one of you out there she's there with Ketu could be some healing of something from past lives yeah it's true it could be but that's interesting that this has come up. So I, I, even I don't know, I've <laughs> just written it down. Someone might need that. We've got Sun and Mars in Virgo and they are gonna go into Libra at the middle of the month. Okay, so what does that mean for you? Now this is happening from your second house to your third house. So, oh, this is beautiful. You're gonna enjoy this. You're gonna love this, Leo. You got both the Sun and Mars moving into the third house. They do brilliantly there. So this is a great time. So this is mid-month onwards. You want to be making the most of this because it's going to go up until about mid-November. This is brilliant energy for you to put effort into your work. If you want to get a job, this is great. If you want to get a promotion, this is a good time to do something about it. This is a good time to win, to create, to do, to achieve. Definitely to put yourself out there definitely to do some networking you know even possibly for a little short trip if that is something that you're able to do that could be good so lovely that's wonderful but please be careful yeah when it comes to travel uh i october november be very very careful okay this this might not be the best time to travel from a collective point of view but for you for your sign, you've got Sun and Mars quite beautifully placed here in the third. It could be okay. Be very, very safe. Take insurance. Do all the good stuff. All right, let's have a look. Um, new Moon. When is that happening? 6th October. And that's happening in Virgo, Hasta Nakshatra. That's happening in your second house. We've got Mars present here as well. So this is a good time to plant a seed. We've got the New Moon. It's a great time to plant a seed for your family. And I've got the note here that you could wish for something where there's some Mars energy. So this could be perhaps, and we're running that sort of two, eight line. So this could be kind, the kind of thing that you wish for. Maybe you recognize that, gosh, you know, all my family, I've got those people in that country, I've got these people in that country. I would love that in five years, we sell everything and we all live in the same country town or something like that you know maybe you've got this dream that you want all your people to be together it's a good time to plant that seed and that's for your family for your whole family what is it that you would love to materialize or see happen in the future 
the new moon on the 6th of October could be a really good time to plant that seed. And on the full moon, that's 21st October, that's happening for you in 9th house, Aries, Ashwini, Nakshatra. What do we have happening here? Now across the board I'm saying that this is all about healing. So you could experience some healing that will help you pick up some more authority over your own life. Okay, you might be able to heal something. Let's say maybe in the past you lost power or you gave your power away or and I'm getting in my mind this thing about yeah like caring about the opinions of others or this kind of thing. It's like you can pick up some real sort of third chakra power here you know and you could pick up a lot more authority over your own life that you are taking charge of your own life and you are referring within. You're not needing outside approval. You're not needing to know the opinions of anyone else. You're just happy to be you and to offer what's within you out, you know, and that's it. Like, yeah, this is a great full moon. I'm excited for you. So that's 21st October. And I've got the note here, can you reclaim that power? And can you, yeah, and can you, you know, you can also reflect and you can reflect how far you've come. And this is a good place to reflect and see, gosh, you know, 20 years ago, I, I really cared about what my friends at school thought or something. But now look at me, I don't care. <laughs> you know, it's like you can look back and see how far you've come. That's a good activity to do on the 21st of October as well, to recognize how you have grown in terms of your power. Because when you look back and you see that, well, I have done it, then it makes doing it in the future even easier because you see that, oh, well, I've done it heaps of times, you know? So yeah, when you recognize that, you know, this is something that you've done, which you would have done, then you can easily reclaim even more power going forward. So Leo, I'm excited for this month for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now gonna welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'll just check on the time, we're okay. Uh, Venus moves into your third house and that's at the start of the month. So this is great for socializing. I've got the note here, can you get out and be with people? It would be so good if you can, if you are living in an area where that's possible and it's safe to get out and be with people, this is a really great time to do that. You've got some lovely energy here to socialize. And of course, if not, you know, you're living somewhere like where I am, um, then you can always do the whole Zoom catch up thing. But, you know, equally you might be in a place where, where you're okay to, to, just, to just chill. And let's have a look and see what else you got going on. You got Sun and Mars are in Virgo and mid-month they're going to go into Libra. Okay, so this is a transit that Sun and Mars are going to make from your first house to your second house. So I've got the note here that you might pick up some more energy because the Sun and Mars on your first house, that could have been draining on your physical body. So yeah, the thing is that if Venus moves into your third house and I'm saying, yeah, this is great for socializing because I was just thinking that you might want to chill and you might want to because you might be quite drained from the last month that we've just come out of. Hopefully though, you'll pick up some more energy when sun enters the second house. That should be better. Sometimes sun in the second house can be headaches and things like that, but at least it's not gonna be on your physical body. So I feel like you should pick up some energy mid-month onwards. The focus will shift from your physical being and your whole self to being on your family and your home life. So be careful in interactions with family. Things could get a little bit heated there. Mars and Sun are not the best energies to have in the second house. They're a bit too strong. You know, Venus and Moon are great there but Sun and Mars aren't the best there. So when it comes to family, mid-month onwards, what I would say is take a bit of time out. If, if you feel things are getting a bit heated or things are just, you know, a bit too much, just take a walk, take a little bit of time out, 
you're conscious now of the fact that these planets are in that area so you've got an advantage you can do something you know that you know if things get a bit heated or too much or arguments start happening you know that mid-month to about mid-november it's a good time to just take a bit of time out and sun and mars are going to move into an even better spot for you you're going to have good energy to do lots so don't worry you've got a great transit coming now new moon 6 october that is Virgo Hasta Nakshatra. This is happening for you in your first house. And we've got Mars present here as well. So this is all about, we've got a new moon. This is all about setting an intention. This is all about planting a seed. And because this is your first house and we've got Mars there, I'm asking you the question, if you could do anything in the future, create life exactly how you want, what, what would you do? What would you create? What would you want to do? So if you could do anything in the future, what would you do? If you could create anything in the future for your whole life, for, think as broad and as big as you would like, what would it be? What would you create? So this is a great time to spend a little bit of time just fantasizing and thinking about, okay, what do I really want to create? And you can plant a seed for this now. And this is the thing about dreams. We do keep reviewing them. We do keep updating them as we grow and as we learn more about the world and we learn more about ourselves. These things do change. I can see the, the battery is flickering there. So if this runs out, I'll keep going. We've got a full moon, 21st October. That's happening for you in 8th house, Aries, Ashwini Nakshatra. So you could experience some healing to do with your in-laws, actually. If they're you know, uh, relation, any relationships there that are a bit strained or a bit difficult, then you could experience a healing there. You could have a culmination there or a cycle or a dynamic or pattern might come to a close at this time. It could be to do with family. It could be to do with shared assets. It could be to do with money. It could even be to do with some type of occult healing. This was interesting when I was thinking about you earlier today, Virgo. I thought perhaps a new gift will emerge. Maybe you'll find some new talent. And because this full moon, we've got this big, beautiful, sorry, the camera got cut. Let's see, is it recording? Yes, it is. Um, I think I was saying that there's gonna be all this full moonlight. You're gonna have this big, beautiful full moonlight. And with that light being on, you might be able to see a fully developed gift that you already have an occult gift that maybe you didn't even know you had that i'll give you an example of someone who had this happen this was michaela sheldon she is a brilliant channel channeler who i watch i love her i think her work is incredible and she's a brilliant channeler but it just the gift and the talent for it just cracked open one day it just you know it just it just happened kind of thing it wasn't something she developed over a really long time it just cracked open and it just kind of happened so that is a really interesting thing to observe that we do have things that we we would have worked to a very good level in past lives but that could crack open at any time in the future and it has nothing to do with age like the gift it's it has everything to do with transits and mahadashas and all different kind of things like this is why you could be in your 50s and you think well there's nothing new for me no there's so much new for you like there's so many things that you know or 50s or 60s or 70s or whatever age 80s you know um absolutely there could be these new things that and they're fully developed and they're ready to go but it's just a timing thing it's a transit thing it's a mahadasha thing amazing so who knows perhaps this could be the full moon where you discover a new gift virgo it's very exciting all right thank you so much for joining virgo we are now going to welcome libra libra thank you so much for joining now we've got venus moving into your second house and this is happening at the very start of the month so this is cool. This is really nice. I have the note here. Have you been eyeing out something to buy? Maybe you'd like to go shopping. Um, maybe it's something beautiful and expensive. 
you know, maybe you've been, I don't know, eyeing out a really nice handbag or a nice watch or something, something beautiful. And I have the note, you might be tempted to treat yourself. Saturn is fourth from, okay, so if we're reading you from the moon or your ascendant or your sun, or whatever it is, uh, Saturn is fourth from that place. So I think Saturn would want you to be conservative. So don't get yourself into debt or any of that. Be careful. Um, so maybe perhaps the guidance is don't buy something. <laughs> but certainly a bit of window shopping is always a good idea. So you can do that this month. Uh, what else do we have here? We've got Sun and Mars in Virgo. You see, window shopping is free, right? You don't need any money. That's what I do. <laughs> That's all I do these days. Um, okay, Sun and Mars in Virgo. They are going to move into Libra in the middle of the month. So for you, that's from your 12th house to your first house. Interesting. Uh, I've got the note here. You might sleep better mid-month onwards. If you've been having trouble sleeping, it could be to do with your sun placement. It could also be to do with ascension symptoms. And this is something that I've been reading so many articles on this is like over the last few years there are always so many articles about ascension symptoms that very often people will have headaches and digestive issues um, I was chatting with a couple of friends of mine in Bali I don't know if any one of them are watching I don't know their placements off the top of my head but they were talking about the fact that because one of them had gone off gluten and but she was saying that you know what I just needed bread and I, th I think she ate bread or something I don't know and um, I eat bread I yeah, yeah but she'd obviously gone off it for a time because she needed to and then she's back on it now and she's like oh it's so good and I really missed it and you know but ascension symptoms are like this where yeah that for a time you just can't have a particular thing you know but it doesn't mean that that's forever it's just it might come back so it could be that maybe you've been having trouble sleeping. If so, it's to do with your sun placement. The thing about this movement from the 12th to the 1st house is that sleep wasn't great when it's in the 12th house, but now these planets are in your 1st house and they could be draining on your physical body. So you've just gone from a period of kind of no sleep to now things being a bit intense or draining on your physical body. Um, I have the note here, take it easy and rest when you can. So if you're able to really rest, the other thing is that sun will be debilitated as well. So yeah, you might be tired and it's good to just chill out and rest and be practical. And the thing is, we've got Saturn in Capricorn. Everything is actually quite slow. I know that there are certain things that are happening at a very rapid pace as well. It's kind of weird. We've got Pluto in here as well with Saturn in Capricorn. So things are, some things will ha be happening extremely quickly, but then I do think there's quite a, Saturn is the brakes, Saturn is slow down. So overall, Libra, if you can slow down, uh, this is a good time to do that and to really look after your physical health, make your health a priority, absolutely. You need to look after yourself, we all do. It's very important for every sign right now to be healthy, to look after the self. Um, Okay, new moon, 6 October, Virgo, Hastha Nakshatra. This is happening for you in your 12th house. We've also got Mars present here. So because it's a new moon, it's, it's all about where do you plant the seed? What do you want to wish for? So I have the note here, if you haven't been on a holiday in a little while, where would you like to go? And this is a great time to plant a seed. Plant a seed for a dream holiday that you would like to take one year. And it might be something that you do in a year or two years, or it might be a few years. I know for me, I think realistically, probably the next time I'm gonna travel, it's probably gonna be 2025 onwards. I don't really see myself doing any travel until then. So um, yeah, I, I'm planting seeds for travel, even though, you know, <laughs> even though it's not the 6th of October yet. This is a great time to plant a seed. Uh, it might materialize much later, but dream now. Yeah, definitely. Dream now, you know. It's a full moon happening on the 21st of October. This is happening for you in your seventh house, Ashwini Nakshatra. So this could be a time to experience some healing, oh how lovely, with your partner, the person you're married to, um, and or your business partner as well. Okay, a lot of partnerships 
your one-on-one -on -one relationships, there could be some healing here. And this is a really good time to look at the culmination of something. Something might complete or come to a culmination and that's to do with your marriage, that's to do with your business if you're self-employed. This could be to do with your following as well or your public if you're um, you know if you have some kind of social media or something like that really good time to look back and reflect on your hard work as well to look at how far you've come every now and then as we're climbing that big mountain it's good to just stop and turn around and take a look wow I've actually come quite far and this is one of those full moons to do that so Libra thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining. So now we've got Venus moving into your first house. This is going to happen at the start of the month so I've got the note here this is a time to pamper yourself how lovely. Um, this is a really great time to look after your physical body, to relax, to unwind, to enjoy good food, uh, enjoy time with people you love there's also great energy if you're single. So if you're single and you want to meet someone, you might meet someone really special at this time. And if you're in a place, of course, where you can go and meet people easily. Uh, we've got Sun and Mars in Virgo. And then mid-month, these are going to transition into Libra. So this is happening for you. This is going, Sun and Mars are going from 11th house to your 12th house. Okay, so you have currently got great energy make the most if you're watching this early um, October make the most of this Sun and Mars energy that are in your 11th house because that's going to end at the middle of the month middle of the month that energy is going to convert from being great energy where you, you can socialize and win and achieve and earn money and do all these great things that's going to turn into this kind of restless energy Sun and Mars in the 12th house it's not the ideal place for these two. Uh, you might find that your sleep patterns get interrupted, that it's difficult to sleep at night. So that's mid-month onwards, but test it out, see if it's true, right? Um, because it might not be true for you and that would be great. The other thing is, I mean, if you're very busy during the day or, and if you do exercise and things like that, you should sleep well. So, and you turn off all your Wi-Fi and all these things, very important. For sleep so there's always sleep hygiene you know uh, that stuff matters so yeah Sun and Mars transition not the best for you but let's take a look at what's happening with the new moon and full moon so on the new moon 6th of October that's Virgo Hastha Nakshatra that's happening in your 12th house we've got Mars present there as well so if you could wish for anything what would it be what would it be? And this is in relation to your spirituality. If you could grow spiritually, if you could, if you could acquire some kind of new spiritual skill or ability, what would it be? That's the kind of thing that I'm thinking of here. So if you visualize what it is that you would like spiritually sorry I was just making sure that that I'm not out of focus because sometimes that happens um, yeah spiritually see look at me I'm already restless we've got Mars in your 12th house and I'm getting restless there's a restlessness here do you know what if you could wish for stillness wouldn't that be incredible this kind of deep profound stillness where you are truly connected with your inner gifts. If you could, yeah, there, you, there's some stillness needed. Okay, so we're talking new moon, 6th October. For you, it's not so much about wishing for something. This is about you being still. If you could carve out some time to really experience stillness on the 6th of October, <coughs> that's going to be important. It's not so much about wish, wishing for something here. Isn't that interesting? I can kind of, there's something. 
<laughs> there's some energy or something this is interesting do you know this is the training of tarot pick a card it teaches you how to read energy because yeah someone here it's not you don't need to wish for something it's not just one i feel like there are a few of you this is scorpio this is this is the whole thing yeah you're going to want stillness you're going to want to carve out some time for stillness on the 6th of october that's the main message there let's take a look at your full moon 21st october full moon that's sixth house aries ashwini nakshatra so I'm saying across the board that this is a very healing full moon. And for you, you might experience healing or completion with a project at work. Maybe you're in a lawsuit uh, and possibly that might come to a close or come to a place where the next stage opens up or some, something closes. There's a, there's a completion here that you're going to experience 21st October project at work, legal suit, something to do, maybe you're competing, maybe the result of something comes to you. There's all kinds of ways this could play out. There's a fullness here to do with your work, your service in the world, competition, lawsuits, something like this. So that's the 21st of October, Scorpio. Thank you so much for tuning in. Scorpio, and we are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking on the time. We're good. Okay, so Venus moves into your 12th house. Oh, this is wonderful. This is great energy. Look at that. This is at the start of the month. Venus, boom, she moves into the 12th house. I have the note here. This is the time to indulge in all escapist kind of things. So if you love procrastinating <laughs> this is the month for you um, I said yeah I've got a note here you're not procrastinating this month you are allowing Venus to treat you because that's what she wants to do so this is a great time to enjoy things like entertainment books music if you're the kind of person that doesn't read a lot of fiction this could be the month to try I am one of those people I don't really read fiction it just doesn't draw me in I read lots of Nonfiction. I read all these kind of, you know, yeah, things that develop my mind or skills or something like that. But uh, this would be the kind of month that I would try to read some fiction anyway. Now, we've got the Sun and Mars in Virgo. Mid-month, these two are going to move into Libra. So that's going from your 10th to 11th house. Oh, yes, this is so good. This is so, so good. I'm so happy for you, Sagittarius, because you need this energy because you're at the end of Sadi Sati period. I understand it's not, you're, not in a you're, you're in a tough spot with Saturn, okay? But it's coming to an end. The worst is over. You've done the worst, which was Saturn on the moon. You've done that. Now, though, you're experiencing a treat. You've got Sun and Mars moving from the 10th to 11th house. So currently the sun is beautiful there in the 10th, absolutely glorious. Mars has had to be a little bit careful maybe with superiors at work, but now they're both gonna go into the 11th house. So this is the great time to expand. This is a great time to be seen, go for a promotion, go for a new job. So we're talking start of October right through to about mid-November, right through to about there. This is excellent, okay? So network, put yourself forward, shine, profit, achieve, go for it, win new clients, present yourself, all these kind of things. Great, great time. You've got a new moon in sixth, on 6th of October, that's Virgo Hasta Nakshatra. This is happening in your 10th house. So again, this is a work thing. Mars is present here. So I have the question for you been asking each sign when there's a new moon that okay what would you wish for this is the time to plant a seed this is the time to set an intention so for you this is all about works so in a work sense if you could wish to be in a certain position or have achieved some big thing what would that be what would you love to be known for what would you love to achieve in your work life what would you love your LinkedIn profile to say you know, what title would you want to have you know all these kind of things have a think about that have a think about that 
We've got a full moon happening 21st October, that's 5th house Ashwini Nakshatra, Aries. So this is a full moon, this is all to do with your creativity. So look at what you've achieved creatively. There could be a culmination here in terms of a creative project. You might be completing a massive project and definitely a massive creative project could be coming to a close. I'm always amazed when I observe the full moons. I have observed this in my life where big projects have come to a close on the full moon. It just feels so wonderful when you see things like that happen. So you've got something really big that might complete here. And it doesn't have to be the whole project. It could be just a portion of the project that completes or a stage completes, something like that. This is also a really good time to look back and reflect on your creativity and to reflect and to see how far you've come and to see all the things that you have achieved up until this point. Because there is this fullness, there is this maturation, really great time to look back and reflect. So Sagittarius, this is a really good month for you. I'm very excited. You're one of the lucky ones. You're one of the lucky three that's getting the best of that Sun and Mars energy. So really make the most of this period from now until mid-November. And of course, stay safe wherever you are. All right, so now we are gonna welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now I'm pretty sure Capricorn, you've got some good news here. Well, first of all, You've got some very good news here. You've got Virgo moving into your 11th house. Uh, Venus. I just said Virgo, didn't I? I'm not even, I was going to say, like, I pull up a glass of something and I'm high on life. Okay, anyway. Um, I don't even have any mushroom tea, right? <laughs> All right, so now uh, Venus moves into your 11th house. This is happening at the very start of the month. Venus moves in there. So this is wonderful, Capricorn, because I know you're at the top of your Sadi Sati period. I know things are tough, but look, this is good energy. So Venus wants you to indulge in the things that you love for this whole month, okay? So treat yourself to time with friends if you can. Really nice time to socialize. So if you're in a place where it's possible to socialize and do all of that, please do. Time with beauty, art, music, good food, all that kind of thing. Enjoy yourself, okay? Luxuriate if you can. Now, Sun and Mars are in Virgo. Mid-month, they move into Libra. So this is going from the 9th to the 10th house. So now this is good. This is really nice energy. This is great energy for the sun. Your sun is going to shine. This is mid-month mid-October through to about mid-November, okay? Your sun is strong. So this is great for work. This is great for possibly, well, promotions maybe when the sun goes into the 11th, which is gonna happen for you the month after. But yeah, this is, this is great to be making a lot of progress, great to shine, great to achieve, great to do things. Mars is good mid-month onwards. Mars isn't Mars is quite good in the 10th house. It is its exaltation place. But yeah, it's it's good. It's not the best Mars. You're going to have a better Mars later when Mars moves into your 11th house. So this is still excellent energy though, Capricorn. I'm really happy for you because I know sometimes when I come on here, I don't have the best of news for you. Venus is fantastic because you're going from the ninth, sun is going from the ninth to the 10th house, mid-month through to about mid-November, you've got beautiful, beautiful sun energy to do with your career. So I'm really happy for you, Capricorn. Now let's take a look at the new moon, 6th October, Virgo has the nakshatra. We've got Mars present here. So I have the note, visualize yourself free and totally in charge of your life. What would you do? What would you create? And the reason I'm saying that is because we've got this new moon, ninth house. This is about your inner authority. This is about your inner power. This is about you being the leader of your own life. And you don't care for the opinions of others. You don't care for, you know, you kind of take over. And I'm just being reminded of this time where Michael Jackson, I think he was working with Quincy Jones. And before he always used to look up to Quincy 
and he would kind of take his lead and take his authority on everything and like a father figure as well right so he would always look up to Quincy but then they had a bit of a dispute with that song Billie Jean I believe and Quincy was like oh that's a boring song just put that on the b-side and Michael was like no way that is a great song and it, and I think that was the moment you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments I'm pretty sure that's the time when Michael and Quincy parted ways and Michael took his inner authority this is the inner authority I'm talking about that's why I brought this up where he decides do you know what I'm gonna that, that song is gold I'm gonna put that forward and yeah I mean he, he made the right decision he believed in himself it, he, if he'd have just believed in Quincy and thought oh yeah that is a lame song I'll just put it on the B side yeah but he knew that no this song is the stuff right so uh, what I'm saying here is on the new moon all of that came up maybe there's some creative person out there who needed all that so thank you um, new moon 6 October Hasta Nakshatra visualize yourself free and totally in charge of your life what would you do what would you create and this is that Michael Jackson moment where he decides I'm not going to listen to that guy I'm going to listen to me and even though that guy is like the top 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 person right we're in Sagittarius here right we're in ninth house here yeah we're in the ninth house see even though that's a really top 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 person I've got an opinion you know it's that right so yeah I'm loving this new moon for you Capricorn 6 October what are you going to create what are you what's your moment where you go do you know what you guys are at the top but what do I think and we'll just get into the full moon sorry the camera just got cut so full moon 21st October that's happening for you fourth house Ashwini Aries Ashwini Nakshatra Aries right it's happening in the fourth house so it's a beautiful full moon and for everybody I'm saying that this full moon is all about healing so you might experience a healing in your home life um, perhaps in your relationship with your mother there might be some healing energy that comes and and just makes that relationship better you know and that would be great and it doesn't when some of these energies work it doesn't mean like you have to call her up or someone has to forgive someone else no these things just happen these things just the planets do take care of stuff the planets do improve stuff sometimes uh, even when they're left on autopilot sometimes sometimes they do a good job of repairing things we don't have to do much so that's kind of the kind of thing I'm talking about here with this full moon just observe see see what happens uh, I've got the note here good time to reflect on how grateful you are for your home yes yeah, beautiful time for you to just reflect on wow I'm so lucky to be here wherever it is that you are just to love and cherish that space and that place where you are I remember when I rented in London oh gosh I'll tell you just very briefly I know but you Capricorn you're going through a tough time I'll spend extra time um, don't tell the other signs I used to rent in oh god some of the most awful places there was this one house and I mean the location was incredible I could basically walk to work if I wanted to so I hardly had to spend any money on train fare I was like zone one or two or something I was in Primrose Hill beautiful part of London right but the house was awful and like the bathroom was full of mold and it was, it was really really bad but I remember when I was there I made my four walls my little tiny room I just made it wonderful and I bought little cushions from Primark and I you know I don't know candles and whatever I just made it wonderful and I loved that place and yeah I just um, and I think it's kind of got something to do with my chart because I like the kind of set up there where I think you could sort of put me anywhere and I'll find a way to love where I am but uh, we can do that you know regardless of what's in your chart you know you can just love your space and and I'm feeling that on the full moon for you I'm, I'm feeling this strong healing energy to do with the home and you loving your home whatever it is you know even if there's mold in the bathroom or whatever but like finding a way to just absolutely love your place so Capricorn I'm wishing you well hang in there I know we've got a lot of people are dealing with some tough stuff there Capricorn moons 
you guys are my special Capricorn moons. Anyone who's going through Sadisati, height of Sadisati, I give them the love. I remember it used to be, was it Scorpio a while ago? And I was giving them the love. Now it's you guys. So um, take care, stay safe, definitely. And yeah, keep on keeping on, you know. Um, it's not long to go now. We've got sort of Jan, Jan, Feb 2023. It's not far away. It's not far away. Just another year to go. All right. Thank you so much, Capricorn moon or ascendant or sun. And we are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. All right. So let's take a look. We've got Venus moving into your 10th house. And that's happening at the very beginning of the month. So is this a good transit for you? I will tell you, this is not the best transit for you. The thing that I have got written here that is good for you with Venus in the 10th, it's not all bad, it's quite good. You can bring some artistic flair or some style to your work, okay? Either to your place of work, maybe you can make it a little bit more beautiful, you can spruce it up, make it look nicer or something, but equally your work, your output, you can make it more beautiful. So even if you're doing Excel spreadsheets, maybe you're working out how to put a bit more white space into it so that it looks more beautiful or something like that. We've got Sun and Mars in Virgo and mid-month they go into Libra. So for you, this is a shift from your eighth house to your ninth house. So again, this is not really the best transit. I don't have great news for you here, Aquarius. Um, you're going to have better transits with these later. Sun's going to be much, much stronger and better placed like when he gets to the 10th and the 11th. So you've got good stuff coming up, but it's just not here right now. So hang in there right out this month you know through to about mid-november things will shift things will change but um i've got the note here be careful with your health okay be careful with upsetting seniors at work so that this is really the time with your sun and mars where they are this is really the time to just put your head down and work get lots of stuff done just be the good dutiful worker don't be raising any curly questions or being difficult or any of that which I know I've done in workplaces so uh, yeah don't do too much of that and put your head down and get some work done that's my advice there um, we've got a new moon happening 6 October that's Virgo Hasta Nakshatra this is happening for you in your eighth house we've got Mars present here which is quite interesting so I have a note here is there a vision you have for your family and maybe and this came up for one of the other signs as well so it's quite similar this is a time to plant a seed. So maybe if all of your family are located in different parts of the world, and maybe you'd love for everybody to move to be together, that this could be the time to plant the seed for that now. Okay. Um, wouldn't it be wonderful if you were all in the same country? It'd just make life so much easier. So this is a time to wish for that. We've got a full moon happening 21st October, third house, Aries, Ashwini, Nakshatra. So this is quite lovely. There could be the possibility of manifesting a healing around your confidence, your efforts, courage, how you get things done. Maybe, maybe you're quite good at procrastinating. I know I am or putting up blockages or um, self-sabotaging or some, some of these patterns, you know, maybe this is a time to let go of some of those or for those dynamics and patterns to really heal. This could be a time for that. There could also be a healing for you in your friend's circle as well. So if there have been some friendships that have been difficult or some friendships that have kind of grown apart, maybe, you know, they might be coming together when it comes to your friend's circle. So that could be quite lovely. I think there's some nice energy there for you on that full moon there, Aquarius. But do you know, it is a good month. It's a good month to get stuff done. It's a good month to be productive, actually. And especially you've got that full moon, that accumulation there around your effort and your confidence and, you know, hopefully something does heal if you do self-sabotage or any of that. And we've all done these things and we all have varying levels of that. So, but yeah, something might quite deeply heal and free you up so that when Sun and Mars do transit into somewhere better, which they will be soon for you, you're going to really be able to make the most of that. So I'm excited for you, Aquarius. Even though it's not great now, you're being prepared for stuff that's coming down the track, 
Okay, so hang in there, Aquarius. Thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we've got Venus moving into your ninth house, and this happens at the very beginning of the month. So this is great for your spirituality. This is great for learning. This is great for learning from gurus, mentors. Maybe you might find a new mentor. And a Venus uh, was in Ramdas's ninth, ha ninth house. I'm pretty sure. So this is amazing. Time. Maybe if you haven't listened to any Ram Dass lectures or you would like to, uh, please do check him out. If you're looking for a new guru, if you're looking for someone to be inspired by, <clears throat> he's definitely someone to check out. Great time for skilling up. Great time for travel if you're able to, but please, please, please be safe. Because I do see that the collective energies October, November, I think they're going to be quite tough. So please, please be safe take insurance or do whatever it is that you have to do. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look. Sun and Mars are in Virgo uh, in the mid middle of the month they go into Libra. So this is Sun and Mars are going to go from the seventh to the eighth house. So I have the note here, be careful how you speak with your partner if you're married. Um, there could be some tension in the relationship there possibly. If you have business partners, be careful how you deal with them at this time. Be careful how you, do, how you deal with superiors at work. Basically, there's significant one-on-one -on -one relationships. This is just a good time to, you know, be diplomatic. There we go. Say less and be diplomatic. Um, this is not the month to kind of push ahead or to try to take center stage or and especially with your spouse, you don't want to have too many, I'm getting the phrase ego entanglements in my mind. I don't know why, but there we go. I'll just share it. Tarot is teaching me if it pops into your mind, share it. Someone needs it. So there we go. Um, yeah, egoic entanglement, something like that. Just avoid any of that, obviously. Hard to do, hard to do when we're, you know, we have reflex actions and things like that. But but this is the beauty of astrology because you're getting this information now you're more conscious and you know what's coming up so equally you know to make yourself a bit scarce you know and i i say i do follow these you know it helps me it helps me i put my head down and do my work or you know go out for walks more or whatever it is i have to do i i uh, heed all these things they do help so yeah, just, just see how that goes. You, you'll read the situation just fine. You're Pisces, you know, you'll read everything very beautifully. So you'll know what to do. You'll have an intuition about what to do. And of course, always test this stuff out as well for yourself. Uh, let's take a look. So I have the note here, you might feel tired. You might feel run down. Good time to take care of your digestion as well. New Moon is happening 6th October, Virgo, Hasta Nakshatra. This is in your 7th house. We've got Mars present. So what kind of a seed would you want to plant at this time? Or if you wanted to wish for something, what would you wish for? Well, with all this activity happening in your 7th house and Mars is here, I'm saying, do you want to start a business? Is there something that you want to create? Maybe you want to create a business. Maybe you want to create a social media platform or something like that. So wish for it now. This is a really good time to plant that seed now. And I had one of you actually comment. I can't remember if you were Pisces, but somebody did comment, uh, I think in the last month or the month before, about the fact that you were starting a social media platform. And I was so excited for you. I think you said you were starting your YouTube channel. How fantastic. So yeah, it's good to you know, use these cycles. And definitely a new moon is a great time to start. We've got a full moon happening on the 21st of October. So that's second house Aries Ashwini Nakshatra. Now for all signs, I'm saying that there could be a healing that happens at this time. And for you, there could be a healing that happens to do with your family. Isn't that beautiful? Some cycle is going to end. Something's going to complete and it's to do with your family. So that's a beautiful full moon to have because a lot of families are going through tough stuff right now. I think we could all use um, a bit of healing at this time in our interpersonal relationships with family, with friends. Um, yeah, it's, it's a tough time at the moment, but 
Pisces, this is looking like a, a pretty good month for you. Um, it does look like it does. Your, your Venus is the highlight, basically. Tap into the Venus energy, and just yeah, enjoy um, enjoy a great month of learning from gurus, mentors, skilling up, being spiritual, indulging, doing all of that. So Pisces, thank you so much for tuning in, and. Thank you to those of you who do watch the whole thing through as well. Uh, yeah, I'm just super grateful for each and every one of you. So thank you so much for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.